Hello, hello. Welcome to today's episode of Over 50 and Flourishing. Flourishing we will today, especially if you are a control freak. <laughs> like I was going to say like yours truly, except I am a former control freak. I learned to let it go. And I'm so grateful that I did. But let me tell you, it was a process. I have brought somebody along today who is going to help us help you. If you feel like you need to have control over every situation and you just can't let go of the grip, we're going to help you do it today. My guest is Dr. Jada Jackson. She is a licensed mental health counselor. She is going to share her journey. I will share mine. And together we will walk through this. Sometimes it's good being a bit of a skeptic, right? There are so many products out there. It's easy to fall for maybe false advertising, spend a lot of money. Hey, if you can spot a too good to be true health hack from say a mile away and read labels like it's your job, congrats, you're a skeptic. Ritual knows every good skeptic deserves a multivitamin that exceeds your standards. Their science-backed essential for women 50 plus multivitamin has high quality, traceable key ingredients in their clean bioavailable forms. Ritual works with world-class certification bodies to validate their products. They're vegan, non-GMO, project verified, gluten and major allergen free, certified B Corp and made traceable. Hey, no more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 50 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 25% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash over 50. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash over 50 for 25% off. It's summertime, y'all. That means social events, weddings to attend, nights out, even just work. That's why I am thankful for today's sponsor, Honey Love. They've got us covered with the best shapewear ever. With Honey Love, you can absolutely feel your best even when you're wearing less. Treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash over 50. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50. After your purchase, they're going to ask where you heard about them. Please support our show. Tell them we sent you. The summer vibes are just getting started, honeys. Shape your life with Honey Love. It seems these days a lot of people are learning about the benefits of fasting, like weight loss, mental and physical performance, gut health, but maybe you worry about the not eating part. Well, that's exactly why Prolon was created. It is a revolutionary plant-based nutrition program that nourishes the whole body while making cells believe they're fasting. But you see, Prolon's not a diet. It is science. Science based on Nobel Prize winning discoveries in medicine. And it all starts with Prolon's five-day program, snacks, soups and beverages, all designed to keep your body in fasting state. How amazing is that? Right now, Prolon is offering over 50 and flourishing with Dominique Soxa listeners 15% off their five-day nutrition program. Go to prolonlife.com slash over 50. That's P-R-O-L-O-N-L-I-F-E dot com slash over 50 for this special offer. That's prolonlife.com slash over 50. Dr. Jada Jackson, my friend, it is so nice to have you here on Over 50 and Flourishing. I am thrilled that you got the time to join us today. Oh, yeah, I am excited. Thank you so much uh, for me. You are so, so welcome. You know, you and I have had a chance to, I would say, briefly get to know one another in our segments that we do together on Morning on Merritt Street. And you are brought in to talk about basically all things psychology related. And it's a variety of, of subjects, you know, that we've discussed. But I've so enjoyed our brief conversations. I thought, you know, it would be so neat to have Dr. Jada Jackson with us on this podcast. And, and as we were talking about subjects, you know, I try to cover a wide variety of issues on this platform. And we've talked to psychologists before about relationships in general. But one thing that I specifically wanted to focus on was control. <laughs> not not just in relationships, but but in our own lives too. I mean, I'm I'm I guess what I would call maybe a recovering control freak. Um, you know, it it did not serve me 
well at all. And I would like to talk about these things because I know a lot of women can probably check that box and say, yep, that's me. Yeah. And probably feel that they are the controllers and the dominators in their relationships. And as you know, that's not healthy either. So let's kind of, let's get to the heart of the matter about control and its origins and you know, where it, where it comes from, why do we feel this need to be in control all the time? Absolutely. So, you know, I'm a lot like you, Dominique, because I am a control freak or a recovering Covering. control freak for sure. <laughs> and much of it, I have to say, and, you know, one of the things I love about doing what I do is because I, I can be very genuine and authentic. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, on the show, we have three minutes. So it's very uh, difficult to, to take that deep dive. But I'm so glad you're giving me an opportunity uh, to mm -hmm. dive here. And so when, when I think about control, um, I have to look at control from a timeline perspective. And, and what is control? Control is our sense of security in a variety of areas. It might mm -hmm. be physical, emotional, um, relational, a variety of areas. We want to make sure that we are safe. And when we are safe, that means, okay, everything is controlled and where it's supposed to be. When we become unsafe, it's when things go haywire and we can no longer control people. We can no longer, we no longer have self-control. We no mm -hmm. longer can control um, our career. We can't control our kids. We can't control our spouses. You know, we can't control those elements of our lives that make us feel like we are completely falling apart and um, mm. everything's out of control. So um, that's control in a nutshell. And um, interestingly enough, and I said I was going to save this for you, Dominique. Mm. And that is I had this interesting dream last night. And I was driving in, I was driving this huge truck and the truck was going up a hill. Now I'm from San Francisco Bay area and I'm used to like going like straight up, you know, drive yeah. um, on these tall hills. And it, it reminded me of that. But what was very interesting about it, it didn't have, the truck didn't have brakes. Mm -hmm. And so when I looked at it, I and of course, I'm the kind of person I'm on Google. I'm like, what does it mean when you, you know, and I'm trying to figure it out. And sure enough, it says that you feel like you're not in control. And I was like, huh, well, that's a no brainer brainer. I didn't need Google to tell me that. Right. Mm -hmm. But when we get to a certain age, um, control uh, usually slips away just a little bit more. And so. Um, yeah, that's kind of my my uh, take on our in initial, what is control and mm. where do I fall in, into that space of control or lack thereof? Yeah. And it's so interesting, Jada, because some of us are in need of more control than others. You know, it's not an even dose when you talk to peers, siblings, family members, not everybody is wired this way. You know, I've done my fair share of therapy and analysis over the years, and I can certainly attribute my need for control to my feeling out of control as a child and in a family dynamic where finances weren't always fluid, which caused and created a lot of change in my family dynamic, a lot of moving, a lot of, you know, moments of having to moments of not having. And, you know, that's what made me so hungry to work and provide for myself so that I could feel in control of the situation. So I know my origins and where they come from. Um, how can people figure out? Because I, I assume as a psychologist, the root cause is always so important to understand so you can tackle it, right? Absolutely. And so just for clarity, I'm a um, licensed mental health counselor or a psychotherapist. And yes. So in understanding where our need for security comes in, if my, so Dominique, can I use you as a case study? Absolutely. So if you were to come into my office, one of the things I would ask is, is there a time 
that you can ever remember that you were most, you felt most out of control or most insecure. And remember, insecure is not necessarily the kind of insecure where I walk in a room and I see people and I feel insecure because of the people mm -hmm. that are in the room. Not that kind of insecure. Yes. What we're talking about is a deep rooted sense of safety mm -hmm. that many of us need when we attach to our mothers, when we attach to our fathers, when we have a caregiver who protects us and takes care of us. And, and that is why in our very early formative years, if we do not have healthy attachment, then oftentimes we find ourselves um, having quote unquote attachment issues. And I'm sure you, you've heard mm -hmm. that before. And sure. what I would um, ask you Dominique, is to tell me when was the first time you ever felt um, that you were not mm -hmm. safe. And I think you just hit the nail on the head. It was yeah. a, a poverty concern, a lack, not having enough. And um, believe it or not, it's interesting how parallel our stories are. In the book that I'm writing now, I have a whole section on uh, poverty and how it impacted my life. So the fact that you just brought it up is is so um, so interesting. But yes, I would try and get to uh, the core, of mm -hmm. really going on with that need for control. Right, because if it's not addressed, and and I can attest to this because I walked this walk for so many years, that feeling of okay, other people don't make me feel safe. So I have to make me feel safe. And not only do I have to do that for myself, I also need to bring that dynamic into relationships because only I have proven to be the one to make me safe. <laughs> so I don't trust you to do it and I don't trust you to do it. And I'm going to try to control and manage and manipulate the situation so I feel safe. But in the end, what happens is that you feel exhausted, yep. you feel resentful, and you feel like you are just you're spiraling out of control again because of your need to control. Yeah, I, I, I know. It's, it's like an oxymoron. Uh, and, yes. And so, Dominique, to that point, I'm, I'm just wondering, I don't know if you want to go here, but how mm -hmm. does that show up in your adult life? Because I know it has impacted my relationships mm -hmm. significantly. You know, I have friends that say, Jada, you're kind of, you know, you always have this arm's distance um, scenario, but I have to be honest with them and say, hey, give me a little time to, mm -hmm. um, you know, make that connection because I also grew up in a domestic violent home. And so my mm -hmm. boundaries are very firm and I've done a lot of therapy myself and, and done a lot of work. And, and that's why I love helping other people because I've been there and done that. So to your, um, I mean, I feel like now I'm interviewing you, but I do. <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm happy to be open about it because it has truly been my journey. And I, I think that you've got to be open and transparent about these things to, to help other women see that you're not alone in this walk. If this is indeed your walk, I mean, it was, it was mine. And a lot of these things I shared in my book too. So no, I'm, I'm happy to have this free flow conversation. Yeah, and so, so then how does it show up in your, your adult life? Because I think that's mm -hmm. where, like, I'll be 55 uh, mm -hmm. in less than a month. And I realized that I've never been 55 before. So I don't really know what to expect or what that, you know, what it looks like. But at the same time, we still have a lot of growth. Yes, uh, completely, completely. So I'll, to your, I'll be 55, I'll be 57 tomorrow. So it sounds like we're both June babies on top of it. Absolutely. So we share even more in, in common, which is so funny. Um, but to your question, how does it show up in adult life? And in my case, it showed up in a variety of ways. I became a workaholic. Um, work became my obsession because it was something that I could do well. Mm -hmm. And, and in doing so, and in providing for myself, you know, and I always, I, it's so funny. I always said to myself, I will never be dependent on a man to take care of me. I are always we the, want are we the same person. We are the same. No, you and I'm telling you, I, I felt it the minute I met you. I'm like, she and I are cut from the same cloth here. We are. <laughs> they, we are. So that was my mantra. It's like, no, I'll never, I will never be dependent on somebody else for that. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Um, number two, in my early relationships, I felt like I would pick men who I felt were projects. 
It's like I saw that they had potential and I was going to be the one to help them self-actualize and, and really see that potential. I was going to control him and control the situation to help him rise and therefore prove my lovability, if you will, by what I brought to the equation. Yeah. So what did, yeah, that's how what, what did you learn from that? Well, I, I learned that people don't change. Uh, they are who they are. And I learned that being a workaholic and simply defining myself through my work wasn't healthy, led to a very imbalanced life and led to a lack of development in other areas that needed to take place. And that in turn led to a decision to release. And we will talk about that and share our journeys because I've got a feeling you and I have a lot to talk about, Jada. Um, we do. On the, we'll take a real quick break and we'll be back with Dr. Jada Jackson in just a moment. Sometimes it's good being a bit of a skeptic, right? There are so many products out there. It's easy to fall for maybe false advertising, spend a lot of money. Hey, if you can spot a too good to be true health hack from say a mile away and read labels like it's your job, Congrats, you're a skeptic. Ritual knows every good skeptic deserves a multivitamin that exceeds your standards. Their science backed essential for women 50 plus multivitamin has high quality, traceable key ingredients in their clean bioavailable forms. I like to take mine at night when I'm winding down, take it with my hormones. That way I make sure I've got myself covered. Uh, they are rigorously tested, validated by a third party for allergens, microbes, even heavy metals. Uh, Ritual works with world-class certification bodies to validate their products. They're vegan, non-GMO, project verified, gluten and major allergen-free, certified B Corp and made traceable. Hey, no more shady business. Ritual is essential for women 50 plus as a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 25% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash over 50. Start ritual or add essential for women 18 plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash over 50 for 25% off. It's summertime, y'all. That means social events, weddings to attend, nights out, even just work. That's why I am thankful for today's sponsor, Honey Love. They've got us covered with the best shapewear ever. With Honey Love, you can absolutely feel your best even when you're wearing less. Yep, they've revolutionized compression technology so you no longer have to feel like you're suffocating, you can't breathe, you're being pinched. None of that when you're wearing their effective shapewear. Their best-selling superpower short is a go-to. It's got targeted compression technology that really distinguishes between areas where you want more support and areas where you need less compression. How genius is that? Listen, treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash over 50. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50. After your purchase, they're going to ask where you heard about them. Please support our show. Tell them we sent you. The summer vibes are just getting started, honeys. Shape your life with Honey Love. Today's show is sponsored by Midi Health. There are great things that come with age, wisdom, experience, and knowledge, to name a few. But if you're a woman over 50, it can also bring some less desirable things. Hot flashes, insomnia, brain fog, moodiness, and weight gain, all symptoms of menopause and perimenopause. Yes, hormonal transition is a fact of life, but it doesn't mean you've got to accept its symptoms as just another part of aging. The experts at Midi Health understand what you're going through and they know how to help. Midi Health is the only virtual care clinic for women navigating midlife hormonal transition. They support you with safe, effective FDA-approved medications, as well as supplements, lifestyle coaching, and preventative health guidance. What's more, all their services are covered by insurance, and they are conveniently accessible through telehealth visits and 24-7 messaging. If you are over 50, use all that wisdom you've gained over the years and visit Midi Health, because you deserve deserve to feel great. Book your virtual visit today at joinmidi.com. That's joinmidi.com. Welcome back. My guest today is Dr. Jada Jackson. She is a licensed medical health counselor who has been on Morning on Merritt Street with both me and Fanchon multiple times talking about all things mental health, psychological issues. We've really, you know, the show is young and I feel like we have talked about so many subjects. Yeah 
on on the morning show, which I I love. But today I really wanted to focus on control issues, control issues with ourselves, control issues in our relationships, because I really think they plague a lot of women. I've talked to so many women who say, I'm a bona fide control freak, or I'm recovering, or I'm retired. <laughs> you know, but we, but we've, we've all had a little bit of that journey yeah. together. And I really want to get to the root, get to the origin of it. And I know that you'll be able to walk us through some real proactive ways to become a recovering or a retired control freak at some point, because it's so important as I was sharing my journey and the pitfalls and where it failed me. You know, Dominique, I love the fact that you are so open and um, it's just really a, a breath of fresh air. And even when you first um, asked to do something on control, I went, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Because that is what, like, as you said, a lot of women in particular, we struggle mm -hmm. with that. The percentage of women who have anxiety is extremely mm -hmm. high. And so when we're talking about control, really what we're talking, and, and let me specify, because mm -hmm. whenever I diagnose a client, I'm looking for very specific criteria. And when we're talking about um, something that is excessive, it means that our basic functioning on a day-to-day -day basis has been impaired. And mm -hmm. When we can't function effectively, meaning we can't make healthy decisions, we are um, controlling the people in our lives and therefore our um, relationships become unhealthy or they begin to deteriorate. Um, all of these controlling or excessive controlling behaviors um, breed anxiety, stress, and some, I'm, I've diagnosed a uh, quite a few women with OCD because mm -hmm. of this, this need to control. And, and so one of the things that I always say is, um, and, and this is for me, I honestly believe that unless my faith becomes a grounded resource in addressing yep. anything where I feel that I'm worrying too much. I'm concerned about something. I too have become a workaholic where I, you know, work so much that I, I really can't do anything. And, and I've learned very quickly that that is extremely unhealthy, but mm -hmm. I have to ask myself, what am I trying to prove? Mm. And, and that's a real hard uh, look in the mirror to determine is, is it the poverty growing up that way? Is it growing up in a domestic violent home where the messaging beneath the surface was that um, you are not worthy? Right. Was it because I was in a relationship and I was cheated on multiple times and the undercurrent of the messaging was you're not worthy? Mm -hmm. Was it, you know, I could go go down the list. But I think this is where we get to really take a step back and, and ask a, a big question. And so here's my question to you, Dominique, mm. is um, can you identify with the anxiety and the stress that comes from excessive controlling behaviors? Yes. Oh, absolutely. I can identify with all of that. And, and to my point, you become you become resentful of what it, this monster that you've created mm -hmm. and the need to control creates anxiety because it is an overload on you. And I'm so glad you mentioned faith because my faith journey didn't happen until later in life. And it wasn't until I found God mm -hmm. in my thirties mm -hmm. and I learned to give it up to him that I suddenly learned the need and the importance because that is the faith journey is. is releasing and it is. trusting at the end believing. of the day what does scripture say about worry it says right don't worry about anything but pray about everything everything right don't worry yes. and pray and that's, that's hard right. for those of us who are perfectionists it's hard for those mm -hmm. of us who are accustomed to having everything just so perfect. 
just so right. Just so. Mm. And yeah, there don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. everything. Um, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and all your That's ways right. acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And so mm -hmm. honestly, for me, I've learned that there really is no in between. Mm -hmm. There's trust or you don't. It's not like you, it's not just a little right. bit. I trust a little bit. No, you either trust or yeah. you don't. And right. You can't just let your little toes get in the water. You're either all in or you're not. Dive and you're so right on that. Head first in and interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. And how important is that? I mean, I found that to be a, a critical part of my journey. And it wasn't until I started to do that self analysis and to really understand or try to understand where it was coming from. And until I developed a relationship with God to take that burden off of my shoulders and to start releasing and letting go and praying and, and believing in a higher power to handle things for me. You know, I thought I was doing everything and it wasn't until I found out or found God that I realized he was doing everything. I just thought I was controlling it all. So it's such an interesting paradigm and a perspective shift. It is. And, you know, one of the things that I think is important is when I, when I work with my clients, I always tell them, um, by trade, I'm a, a cognitive behavioral therapist. And, and I, it's important to me to recognize that the way God created us, and, and we're beautifully, fearfully, and wonderfully made, our brains are so dynamic in how we process information that we can have an emotion obtain the messaging behind that emotion and then think about it, reframe what we're thinking about, honor the emotion, and then we have free moral agency to choose how we react to whatever it is, the relationship, the argument, the, the lack of resources, the fill in the blank, whatever it is, um, we have been given everything that we need. And that's one thing that I always tell my clients is that I believe that what you think is what you feel, what you feel is what you do. However, mm -hmm. if we can isolate the faulty cognition or the faulty thought and shift it, and this is where I believe God's word comes into play and where it becomes so powerful in our everyday lives, is that if God said, don't worry, but pray, mm -hmm. the big question is, can we shift from the fear that either originates here in the mind or here in the heart? Can we shift and say, as difficult as this is, God, <laughs> as difficult as this, I'm going to step out on the water mm -hmm. and I'm going to trust that in this situation, you're going to show up exactly the way that you've promised me that you're going to show mm -hmm. up. And that isn't that the faith walk? That's the journey. That's the letting yep. go, right? That's the, okay, I'm going to take my hands off of it as much as I, and you're like pulling it and yanking it. And you're like, let it go, you know, but yeah, it, it, it it's, it's a choice. It is 100% a choice. And to your point, there are no baby steps in this process. Mm -hmm. You have to wholeheartedly dive into the deep end. Mm -hmm. And you've got to have faith and trust and see where it goes. And what I've also learned too, is that my plan isn't always his plan. And so I can't, just because it doesn't turn out the way I had expected or anticipated, doesn't mean it's not being used to sharpen me and shape me in some way that I may not be aware of in the moment. And it could be a growing season for me or a growing opportunity. And I may not like it. I may, you know, I may release control and let somebody else do something and not be as happy with the way it turned out. But what do I have to learn? Oh, well, life goes on. Is it the end of the world? No. Did anybody die? No. Well, it just wasn't perfect. Not every T was crossed and I was dotted, but okay, let it go. Because how else will people get better at what they need to do if we don't give them the opportunity in our lives to let them do it? Exactly. And 
that strengthens relationships. Right. You know, I, I have to tell you this this little story, um, Dominique, because when my husband and I, when we first got married, I had a pet peeve. <laughs> and it, Don't we all? <laughs> what was yours? <laughs> dishes in the sink. Yes. I, and I had lived um, by myself for so long. And I'm like, yeah, we don't do dishes in the sink. Mm -hmm. We just, you know, when you finish, you do what you, what people do. And you, if you use a cup, you put it in the sink or put it in the dishwasher, dishwasher. Or you wash it or whatever. Um, however, I have grown so much over the last 10 years because it just doesn't matter. And not only that, he runs the dishwasher every night like clockwork. Mm -hmm. I just had to shift to recognize that we just didn't do things the same way. And right. he could tell you a ton of things about me. I'm just using this as an example. <laughs> was, you know, and anyone who, who's in a relationship or has been married, you know that there's this kind of give and take reciprocity dynamic. Mm -hmm. But I said that to say the growth process you know, and and one of the things that I, I talk to my clients quite a bit about is the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. Mm -hmm. um, if you know anything about Carol Dweck's work, um, it's if you've had trauma and, and too, I consider myself a trauma therapist, um, mm -hmm. especially for those who have been through uh, significant traumas uh, during childhood or even after. But one of the things about a fixed mindset and a growth mindset is exactly what it says. People who have trauma get locked into a very concrete, non-movable, fixed mindset, whereas someone who's a little more open and willing to grow and change and willing to step outside of their comfort zone, you're happier you have healthier you have more healthier relationships and mm -hmm. here's the key you have a healthier relationship with self yes and i think yes. that that above all is the most important mm. i you know what i think you are 100% right and that is the root and origin of healthy relationships with others as well and you know, and I'm sure you can testify to this, that when we, when we try to grip and choke and hold on so much and have so much control, the people in our lives receive it poorly. Mm -hmm. They resist, they fight it. Mm -hmm. So we're getting the opposite to your point, your dishwasher yeah. story. The, the minute you let go, I bet your husband wanted to please you. I bet he wanted to, to do acts of service for you, right? Yes. The minute you let go of the chokehold. Yes. And, and, and that's just it. When we let go, it has, and, and, and it, it's with my husband, it's with my business, mm -hmm. it's with my own personal growth, that when you let go, you realize that what God has planned for you is so much better than mm -hmm. what you could have planned for yourself. And That's right. I have learned that and, and still learning it. It has mm -hmm. been um, an interesting journey, Dominique, for me. Uh, and I'm, and I'm going to share this because it's, this is like real time information. Mm -hmm. But um, we are caregivers uh, for my husband's uh, mom, who mm -hmm. is just the most precious, wonderful little lady. Mm -hmm. But we had a death in the family today, this morning. Oh, oh no, Chato. My um, husband's oh, brother, yes. And it's real time. It's <sighs> unfolding as is. And um, my husband and I, um, one of the things, and, and that's why I say this is real time. You, you can't control everything. Right. I always say, you know, we can um, choose our battles. We can, you know, do we fight the 
want the battle here and recognize there's a whole war to eventually fight or, or where do we let go? Uh, yeah. Where do we step up and put our armor on and say, okay, this is the one that I have to fight. And, and then for me, it's how do I show up for my husband? You know, I'm like running around the house, making sure my husband, are you okay? <laughs> are you okay? Yeah. But I can't control his emotions. I can't control how he's feeling. I can't control how my mother-in-law is doing. I can't control even how, you know, every once in a while I have this wave of emotion and I understand it. Mm -hmm. We were prepared for, for, for this, even though it was just over the last two months that um, he became sick. But here's my point. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about being uh, genuine and, and authentic being vulnerable in mm -hmm. the messiness of life. Yeah. It can be so complicated. Um, but again, God gives this incredible peace mm -hmm. when we do what he says to do. Okay, I'm not going to worry about this. But boy, let me tell you, I'm praying every five seconds. Lord, please, in the name of you, you know, I am praying mm -hmm. as much. I am meditating and enjoying the peace that comes along with it, but not excluding the truth of the weight of our situation yes. right now. Yes, yes. And I am, thank you for being so brave and honest um, and vulnerable with my audience and sharing that. And I, along with everybody who is listening, I know extend their deepest sympathies, Jada. That is so, the fact that you're even here with me today speaks volumes about you and how important it is for you to connect with people and to, um, to talk about these things. So I'm, wow, I'm, I'm blown away and I'm, I'm heartbroken at the same time, but just know I express my gratitude in all of this. Um, let's take a quick break right now and, and we'll be back. We're talking about, boy, you talk about releasing control. That right there mm -hmm. is a biggie. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back right after this. It seems these days a lot of people are learning about the benefits of fasting, like weight loss, mental and physical performance, gut health, but maybe you worry about the not eating part. Well, that's exactly why Prolon was created. It is a revolutionary plant-based nutrition program that nourishes the whole body while making cells believe they're fasting. But you see, Prolon's not a diet. It is science. Science based on Nobel Prize winning discoveries in medicine. And it all starts with Prolon's five-day program, snacks, Soups and beverages, all designed to keep your body in fasting state. How amazing is that? Now, I did the five-day program. I felt incredible. Prolon really isn't like any other diet I've tried. I don't believe in diets. It's not. It's truly science. It was so convenient. They sent me everything I needed in one box. Right now, Prolon is offering over 50 and flourishing with Dominique Soxa listeners 15% off their five-day nutrition program. Go to prolonlife.com slash over 50. That's P R O L O N L I F E dot com slash over fifty for this special offer. That's prolonlife dot com slash over fifty. Today's podcast sponsored in part by True Nutrition. Unlike most supplement brands that focus on marketing a product that's manufactured elsewhere, True Nutrition manufactures its own products while marketing takes a back seat. True Nutrition was formed to provide protein powders and supplements with absolutely no fillers, no additives, no gluten, and more importantly, no junk. I personally love the pea protein. It's an isolate non-GMO comes in my personal favorite French vanilla, but also chocolate fudge brownie, chocolate peanut butter. But here's the great part. 120 calories, 28 grams of protein, only one gram of carbs, zero sugar. What a great product, especially if you want to go vegan, but they also have whey. They have it from egg whites as well. Listen, you can finally stop worrying if your supplements are doing more harm than good. For a limited time, our listeners get 15% off your entire order when you use code OVER50. That is 15% off your order at truenutrition.com with promo code OVER50. Take the guesswork out of nutrition with True Nutrition.
Welcome back. My guest today is Dr. Jada Jackson. She is a licensed mental health counselor. And Jada, you just shared something very, um, very sad with us before break about the loss of your brother-in-law. And we're, we're so terribly sorry. And, you know, to your point, that is a moment of releasing total perceived control. We have no control over any of this life, death. It, it just to how we handle it. And you brought that up earlier. Um, I will share with you in my mother's passing after she had her cardiac event at the restaurant and I was um, behind the ambulance after they tried to resuscitate her and they got a, a heartbeat. But I remember it following the ambulance to the hospital and tears were just streaming down my face. And I, I just remembered saying, God, as is your will, mm. as is your will, as is your will. And I, 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 I just felt so compelled to say that out loud as I was following that ambulance. And I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know anything, but I just knew that it was out of my hands and it was in his. And I had to honor that and respect that. But, but I will tell you from a personal perspective, it was such a release for me in the process of her passing. And does it take away the pain? Does it take away the sting, the hurt, the sadness? No, but it takes away this feeling of, I've got control over something that I really don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, that's the freedom. Is That's the freedom. It I, is. That's the freedom that God gives us. And yes. the peace, the contentment. You know, Paul said, um, in you know every state that i find myself in i will be content and mm -hmm. you know how can you be content in these very sad moments and and i do believe that god gives us a very deep sense of peace mm -hmm. a very deep awareness of his presence and like you said it it doesn't make anything go away and and that's mm -hmm. one of the things that I, I say to my clients all the time too, you know, um, I can't even begin to tell you in the um, over, I guess in the last 10 years, 2000 clients that I've had that we have in, in our um, database, how many people I've sat down with and they have wept bitterly because of, again, the complexities of life, the messiness of life, the rejections, uh, the pain, all of these things that we experience in life, it doesn't go away. However, there is a sense of peace mm -hmm. that comes when we relinquish and mm -hmm. submit to God's yes. will. Yes. And that, that right there is the, is the word that needs to be put into practice. Mm -hmm. And it is submission. And it is completely counterintuitive to somebody who's a control freak. Wait, what? You, you want me to submit? You want me to pass a baton? You want me to sit back? Are you kidding me? Nothing's going to get done. It won't get done right. The house will be a mess. The kids won't get dressed. The job won't get done. Yep. Blah, 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 blah. But you have to submit because you can't be all things and do all things for all people and still take care of yourself. Absolutely. And you are preaching to the choir, let me tell you. <laughs> because I mean, that is a word that I need, I personally have needed um, to hear. I just posted this on my Instagram yeah. not too long ago about, um, and I, I want to say it was Dr. Caroline Leaf. It, I mm -hmm. posted from her, but uh, she pretty much said, um, you know, if, if you're not taking care of yourself, or if you're if you're constantly doing and not taking care of yourself, there's a problem with that. And, and I said, yes. yeah, that's me. I had to raise my hand on that one because mm -hmm. again, it, um, it, it's, it's work, but it's necessary work to let go. And mm -hmm. another um, component to control Dominique, I think that we haven't really hit on, and I know we'll be wrapping up here soon. And I just wanted to throw this out there for us to consider. And that is, our identity, mm -hmm. you know, from a psychological perspective, control is often very deeply rooted and tied to 
who we are and our identity. And many of yep. us may believe that maintaining some sense of control really equates to our competence. And I'll go back to what I said earlier, that self-worth yes. and um, realizing that there's always this underlying messaging that comes forth that says, um, you know, how do you feel about yourself? Are you competent enough? How, are you worthy enough? Uh, mm -hmm. Are you wealthy enough? Are you enough? And that identity piece, I wanted to tie that to our identity in Christ because I just think mm -hmm. that it is so necessary because of yes. course, um, you know, our identity in Christ speaks volumes to who we become because we have to die to self. And mm -hmm. the self is a piece of that letting go, right? Yes. In order to, I mean, sometimes I feel like I'm dying when I have to let something go. And I'm like, okay, is it really going to be okay? And, you know, it's like I'm, I'm holding really tightly and then to let go, it's like, okay. Nah. <laughs> It is. It is. It's a horrible feeling, but it does get better over time. I have to say, it does. It's like okay, I, okay, we're 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 good. We're it's going to be okay. And you're looking around, you're waiting for the shoe to drop, and then it's like, right, lo and behold, the shoe doesn't drop. Right, and or maybe it gets picked up, or maybe it's done even better than you had anticipated, and lo and behold, surprise. Right, and here's the big one. Here's the big <laughs> one, Dominique. Your way wasn't the best way. Right. His is. <laughs> right. It's like, <laughs> can you accept the fact that Jada? No, there was a better way to do it. There was a better mm -hmm. way to say it. There was a better way to show up. There was a better, there was a better way. Yes. It, can you accept that? And the reality is when we're holding on and we're, we're attempting con to control, there is no better way. Mm -hmm. but our way. And that's why people don't like us when we're controlling, right? Exactly. Because we're trying to be God and there is only one God. And you know what? You're, you're so right. And I found that it wasn't until I submitted and I said, okay, this isn't up to me. I'm going to let go. I'm going to up my prayer game. I'm going to up my conversations with God. I'm going to release and let go and let him come in. And it wasn't until that process started to happen that life literally started to fall into place in ways that were inexplicable, in ways that were undeniably his. And, and that, to me, by, by holding on to all this control, you are denying yourself the rich blessing that God wants to give you, where you can truly say, there is no other way this could have happened except by him. Absolutely. Dominique, preach. I am. I <laughs> it's my walk. <laughs> and that's why I'm here. Look, that's yeah. why you and I have met on Merritt Street. That's yeah. why this podcast exists. That's why all of this happened. This wasn't me. This was me letting go. Oh, how good. That's so good. That's so encouraging to me. Mm -hmm. That is so, say, you brought me on to talk about control and, and counseling psychology and mental health, mm -hmm. but that just really spoke to me because the reality is I think I personally am in a season right mm -hmm. now of, of learning uh, to let go and, and learning to do things that um, are outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. And Again, I always go, okay, at 50, what does 55 mean? Mm -hmm. You know, not what 55 means to someone else, but what does 55 mean for what God has in store for me? This is a new season for me. This is That's a right. new, um, and I'm like peeking out, I'm going, huh? Mm -hmm. see. What are, huh? How about that? Do I like it? How's that feel? It's different. Am I going to want to do it? Yeah. yeah, it is a new, you know what I found too? And tell me how you feel about this. I, I used to have, um, and, and look, you can pull footage of me from two years ago where I said, I will never get back in the news business. I will never, ever, ever, never, 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 never going to do that ever again. And I had all of these absolutes written all over my life. And again, it wasn't until I released that, 
and open myself up to whatever God wanted to put in my life. And, you know, and here I am back in the business, but in a very different way and a very different type of a format that's, that's very, um, surprising to me and cathartic and, and really allows my creativity to come through. So it's, it's in a different expression than I ever could have imagined. But I've also, I've been learning to stop writing these scripts of absolutes over my life because they don't do any good either. Oh my goodness. That's, I love that. I love that. And, and, you know, as you were talking, Dominique, I, what came to me was, you know, as we grow and as we blossom, as we bloom as individuals, really what we're doing, we're growing from glory to glory. It's the process Mm -hmm. of sanctification, which means that we are getting better and better as we grow older, first of all, let's say that right. as a, yes. that's a total different concept than mm-hmm. what society says. But at the same time, control um, oftentimes is a, a spiritual barrier. Mm-hmm. And that spiritual barrier prevents us from growing and thriving. And yes. to, to understand it both psychologically and spiritually, there's a personal growth and a requirement. I, I, mm. I'm i going to say, use that word, a requirement yep. that we have to recognize that whatever our fears are, whatever um, our comfort zone may be, it is time very deliberately mm-hmm. to walk outside of that fear or to face that fear or step outside Mm -hmm. of the comfort zone. And, and so to know that you were like, I'm not doing that. And then you're like, but I'm going to do that again. (laughs) Exactly. I'm like, is that, is that the Gemini in me coming out? What is this? (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. That means to me, that's obedience. Yeah, that's obedience. It's, you said one thing, God said something else, and you said, "Yeah, yes, okay, Lord, I'm going to do that." And I'm yes. It. Well, and I love how you just you tied. You said so many good nuggets in that last statement, but you tied the psychological and the spiritual together, and that just really hits home for me because it was the marriage of those two that freed me from my need to control everything and everyone. Mm. So to button it up and for, you know, the person who's listening and they're like, okay, I hear you. That's me. You're talking about me. What are some tangible first steps to get our listener or viewer out of this cycle and into this path of freedom? Self-awareness is Mm -hmm. the first step, just being aware, because the reality is we think that we can control other people, but it's really self-control that God um, demands of us. We have to have, and it's a fruit of the spirit. Self-control is the fruit of the spirit. And biblically speaking, the scripture says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And a sound Mm -hmm. mind can be translated into self-control, which means being aware of what we're thinking, how we're feeling, and doing the real work of looking in the mirror. And again, not just because I'm a therapist, but I wholeheartedly believe in therapy because, or Mm -hmm. life coaching, if you have, or Mm -hmm. if you have a spiritual advisor, getting outside of yourself, So you can get all of the stuff, just like you and I are having this conversation right now. It's getting all the stuff out, putting it out there on the table and going, let's sift through this and let's see, okay, we're going to put that on the shelf. Uh, Yeah, let's, yeah, let's put this one on the shelf. Now we're going to let this one go. This one right here, we're going to let that go. Okay. Okay. We're going to throw that out. Right. So going through that process. And that's one thing. The second thing is um, scripturally speaking, um, the Lord encourages us to meditate and pray to meditate on his word day and night. I Mm -hmm. strongly believe, again, and I said this before, God created us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Our brains have this incredible ability. It's the process of neuroplasticity. So what we put in is definitely what we get out. So Mm -hmm. if we are praying, if we are reading Um, scripture, if we are meditating on his word day and night, what happens is 
we can change our brain structure for a more positive outcome. So that is important. So mindfulness, I, yes. I say reframe, you know, yes. I use the word of God to reframe. Oh, mm -hmm. Some people may use um, affirmations and, and, but I like take God's word, turn it into an affirmation and then use his word to mm -hmm. reprogram um, my brain. And so I think that is a process. Um, yeah. And then another thing is uh, community, having mm. connectivity. Um, connection is a basic fundamental human need. We have to have it. Yes. And connecting in a way that will allow people to support us when we need to learn to let go. Uh, we have mm -hmm. to have that people who we can trust. Yes, so important. You know, I'd like to I like to think of our need to control as software and God's desire to get in and write the ship as hardware. And if we can just let that hardware come in, then suddenly all that software and stuff that we've been doing, we realize has been a total waste of time. And it's not to say you know, not to work on, there's a big difference between working on yourself, cultivating yourself, developing your talents and your skills and, and to be good and to honor the seeds that God planted in you. But it's also not thinking that you have control over every situation and that, that need to be able to release. And so you've given us so many great big picture things for somebody who just says, okay, Dr. Jackson, what, what little thing can I do today? What's a, where's a good area to start? Can you give some examples that, cause I know it's, it's a dive. I mean, it's, it's going head first into the deep end, but, but not all things have to be such big things. They can be smaller things to get us more comfortable to doing this process. Absolutely. When we're talking about control, again, I go back to awareness. I always say, um, awareness, knowledge, action. So mm -hmm. the awareness piece of it is certainly just becoming aware. So you may want to journal and mm -hmm. people are like, not the J word, but journal yes. is so journaling is so very important. And I'll tell you why, because we have to have a conscious stream of, of release, a mm -hmm. conscious, conscious stream of thought and getting it out. So it's not stuck or getting it out so we're not being repetitive and we're not ruminating. Anything yes. that causes us to ruminate, it gets it gets sour, it gets stuck, and, and, and we don't want that. So you want to get it out. You want to make sure that you know what it is that you're holding on to, and then you have to start doing the work. Why are you holding on to it? Mm -hmm. if, if therapy is not your thing, start writing down what it is you're holding on to it, and then why are you holding on to it? And, and write that down. There are a couple of apps who take um, that allow you, like the Calm app, and mm -hmm. apps that are out there now. Before there was only one, and now there's a whole a, a ton of them. But um, I think that it is important to understand um, why and what you are holding on to. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree with you. And I think, you know, and I, to your point, when you talked about, you know, the dishes, something like that is such a great example of something where you may say, okay, you know, the fallout from this won't be so bad yeah. versus, you know, if I give control, let's say of a business idea to my partner, you know, the, the consequences of that could be far greater Correct. than a few dishes left in the sink. Yeah. So you, maybe people can prioritize their areas of absolutely. releasing control too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Once you become aware and you make your list and, or you journal it and you figure out that, Hey, you know what? I am attempting to control uh, when my son goes to his, I don't know, baseball practice on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And then if you're constantly arguing and fighting with your son about him getting ready and hit, well, relinquish that and let him figure it out. And I bet you either he'll figure it out or he'll quit. Mm -hmm. And either way, right. <laughs> you get to say, okay, right? It's, so yes, small things like that, that allow us to 
kind of pull back and go, okay, yeah, this was important. This wasn't important. This is a battle mm -hmm. of the fight. This is not a battle of the fight. But yeah, we're not talking about big things. If you're making a decision about your mortgage and you're doing, we're not talking about that. So don't don't make a big decision, you know, around something monumental. But uh, prioritizing these very small things and and realizing um, that yeah, the small things can help us grow pretty rapidly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they can lead to bigger things. And I'll share a quick story before I before we button up here. But um, you know, as an employee, don't hire people and then not allow them to do their work, not allow them to either succeed or fail. And a perfect example of that is me having Courtney, who's you know behind the scenes, she's listening in to, and producing this podcast right now. But before I had Courtney, I mean, for a while, I did my own social media up to a point, and then I would edit my own YouTube videos. And I mean, I had my hands in every little jar. Mm -hmm. And and it was getting to a point where I just couldn't do it anymore. It was It was all getting to be too much. And I had to pass the baton. And I knew, you know, I, I come from 28 years of news and editing experience. Of course, you know, she won't have that. But if I don't enable her and let her and let her make those baby steps and then try to impart some wisdom and let her grow, she will never be good at what it is that I hired her to do. Mm -hmm. And now I can proudly say she does it all. She edits all. I don't even look I'm like court. Just go for it. Go for it. And she shows it to me. Great. Fabulous. And now I learn from her because I let go of the control, went through that that weird season, but now everybody's flourishing because of it. Absolutely. No pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended. And quick question. How do yeah. you feel about that? Oh my gosh, I can breathe. Are you kidding me? It's amazing because releasing that freed up the bandwidth to now be able to take on other things that God put in my path. So I had to release control. And there's the lesson and the wisdom from that. I love it. I love it. <laughs> You're the perfect well, client. Thank you. Thank you. And you are the perfect um, doctor, guest. Oh, my gosh. I, my audience is going to love you. I'm going to put this out there right now just for those. I'm going to put all your information, links to your Instagram, your web, any way people can find you. But I know, Jada, they're going to want you back. So if anybody uh, watching on YouTube has any ideas for future conversations between the two of us, they can leave it below. Um, I just know they're going to want this conversation to continue. I love talking to you. I think you're so bright. You're so so smart. You're just so full of great wisdom. So I want to have you back if you'll come back. Anything for you, Dominique, anything oh. for you. Thank you, my darling. Oh my gosh. Well, Dr. Jada Jackson, what a treat. We have released control and who knows what else we may get rid of <laughs> through the process of our conversations. Throwing it out. Throw it out. That's right. Let's do it. Toss it away with you. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Thank you. What a wonderful conversation. And I didn't want to button it up without letting you know that Jada has a mindset planner and journal that you can find on Amazon. We will also link it in the description below if you have a hard time finding it, but it can really help you in your journey to release control and to live a freer, healthier, happier and more fulfilled life. If you enjoyed today's podcast and you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share me with those that you know and love. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, please in the comment section, let us know what you thought. And if you want future conversations between the two of us, what would you like us to discuss? Uh, we will read through those and try to compile a list and get busy on that. Give it a thumbs up. If you like the content, don't forget to subscribe so that you'll get notified every time I release a podcast podcast, which is on Monday, and then a YouTube video tutorial on Thursdays. Those always stay the same, but I'm so glad you're here with me on this journey. Go out, be bold and be blessed, and I'll see you next week. Today's show is sponsored by Midi Health. There are great things that come with age, wisdom, experience, and knowledge, to name a few. But if you're a woman over 50, it can also bring some less desirable things. 
hot flashes, insomnia, brain fog, moodiness, and weight gain, all symptoms of menopause and perimenopause. Yes, hormonal transition is a fact of life, but it doesn't mean you've got to accept its symptoms as just another part of aging. The experts at Midi Health understand what you're going through, and they know how to help. Midi Health is the only virtual care clinic for women navigating midlife hormonal transition. They support you with safe, effective, FDA-approved medications, as well as supplements, lifestyle coaching, and preventative health guidance. What's more, all their services are covered by insurance, and they are conveniently accessible through telehealth visits and 24-7 messaging. If you are over 50, use all that wisdom you've gained over the years and visit Midi Health, because you deserve Deserve to feel great. Book your virtual visit today at joinmidi.com. That's joinmidi.com.